Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. I'm Izzy and today I've got a very special treat for you. We're taking a trip down memory lane to just over a year ago when I built a wild and crazy drill powered bike. Now, what was really special about this build wasn't the build itself. It was the experience of getting to build something crazy fun with some really cool people and just having a blast building something amazing. I really hope you enjoy this video. So when you think about it, this project is really crazy. Minus eight bearings and a couple of wheelbarrow wheels, a few rods for axles, this thing is entirely made out of wood. Well, some screws and some nails as well, but the rest of it is all wood. And what's even crazier about this is we're going to design this thing so it can be powered by a rechargeable battery operated drill. So when it came down to it, I wanted to build this three-wheeler with this giant wheel. And to do that, I wanted to have this kind of crazy contraption of a drive mechanism. So you'd have a small, you know, drive gear driving this big wheel with this internal gear. And I wanted the wheel completely exposed minus the one gear. Now, try as I might, there's no way I could figure to get enough compression and, and grab on the lower portion of the wheel so the top wheel wouldn't be flopping all over the place so I ended up having to go with this kind of odd looking hub assembly that had contact points in three positions we had the drive gear and then we had these two upper wheels that would hold that wheel stable as it was going down the road so there's about 16 sheets of plywood in this build now granted some of it got wasted and others you know the small big enough parts we used on other projects but this needed to be pretty robust considering the um, guys building this thing are fairly good sized guys. I needed this thing to be stable and not to be dangerous, especially with other people wanting to ride it. So after we got all the kind of design issues figured out with the wheel, the rest of it was a lot of just sitting down at the 3D modeling computer and modeling it out and then cutting it out and then assembling and I gotta say a big huge thank you to Jim and Kyle Chase for getting on this and just really being a big huge help with this and with their help we were able to get this done in a reasonable amount of time. I think we actually had probably about two weeks of man hours into this project with uh, three guys and then some extra late evenings with myself and Jim hanging out doing some stuff. So big thank you and shout out to Kyle and, and Jimmy for all their help. Really appreciate it. Made it a lot of fun to do as well. So with the back wheel done, now it's time to turn our attention to the body. And instead of just doing a bunch of layers of plywood, which would have made this thing super heavy, went with some ribs in between uh, two layers of plywood and then came back later and sandwiched a second layer. So each side is an inch and a half thick with these ribs in between. And that worked really well. That kept that back solid enough that with that big wheel sticking up, it wouldn't be flopping all over the place. Now this is what it looked like for basically a week and a half, two weeks straight. Just th the three of us going, working on this thing, CNC running in the background, you know, talking about the next step. And it was just a lot of fun. This is one of those situations where you get into very rarely where you're working with, you know, some great guys and just having a blast with the project.
Funny thing was, we had three benches, three eight foot by four foot benches in that shop, but we pretty much all just kind of congregated around one bench and worked. It was, it was just a blast. So now we've got a real good idea about where this whole build is going, and it, and it was kind of a slow start, just kind of figuring everything out. And then once we did, just quick, you know, finishing everything up in the 3D modeling side and then getting everything ready for the CNC, and then it was just go time. Pretty much every day was just another day of making parts, sanding parts, fitting parts. And it was just, you know, it's one of those situations where it was a lot of fun. Now this was a particularly interesting part of the build was the seat. So what we're using for this is called bendy board or in some places in the country it's called wacky wood or whatever. And as soon as we got the, the front end of it, the steering kind of mechanism set up so it would be stabilized. So this thing would actually kind of sit without rocking too much, you know, sideways. It was time to put the seat on and we used the bendy board to create this shape. Now bendy board is a very flexible plywood that you can kind of push over you know different you know forms or shapes and in this case we're using the bike for the the form which made the most sense instead of making a second one so we did we took three layers of it now each layer has glue in between and then we sandwiched it all together and we used Kyle as an extra weight to help kind of push it down into where the seat needed to be and then screwed it all right to the bike now there's just one line of screws going up and those screws are in each of the ribs and then come back behind that and clamp all the sides together and this worked out really well. I'm pretty sure we used every single clamp or small clamp that we had in the shop for this. So after the glue had dried, Jimmy took off all the clamps and then we unscrewed this thing from the form or from the bike itself. Now I kind of drew this out just mostly freehand. I wanted this kind of free flowing banana seat looking thing that you might see on a Hot Wheels car or a big wheel bike or something cool. Now after that was done, I sanded everything out and then primed it and added a couple layers of Bondo and then sanded that out and primed it again to get the surface finish that I wanted. Now at this point, we're kind of switching gears and heading back over to the mechanics of the bike. Now we actually haven't had this bike as wheel assembled yet. We don't know if this is actually going to work. So Jimmy and I put a whole bunch of furniture paste wax on it and threw it together on a little thing we rigged up on one of the benches to see if we could actually make this thing work like we wanted it to. And it worked awesome. So after we knew it would, work, it would work, we mounted it to the bike itself and then just started taking some measurements for the front wheels and the, how the wheeling, how the steering would work and all kinds of, all those fun little details that seem to always escape right till you get to that point in the project. So to do the steering and the wheels and everything, I had to make another trip up to the big box store to grab some more plywood. and. At that point all I had was my Prius, so I had them cut the four sheets down into 32 inch lengths and then we put that on the CNC machine and cut out the parts that we needed. Now out of the sheets we're going to use that for the side, the extra side of the uh, build itself, so we're going to double up the side at this point and then we cut out all the parts we would need for the extra steering and, and that kind of stuff and then started beefing that all up. Now. It's easy to get ahead of yourself in these projects, and I want to, you know, say that before this next part, because I actually painted the bike before, or primed the bike before I put the second layer of plywood on the sides, because somebody's a genius. So after that, I sanded, I sanded the one side that I'd primed down, added the second layer, flipped it over, and added the second layer to the other side, and this is going to give the bike body the rigidity that it needs to really be strong and you know that wheel won't be you know it's four feet in the air and there's a lot of weight on it so it would tend to want to sway to side to side and this would give it the rigidity to, to not do that so after i added the seat to it more bondo this project has like a gallon and a half of bondo in it just covering screw holes and making everything look right for the paint uh, bondo works great on plywood guys if you ever need a filler for plywood 
So with all that done and said, it was time to start priming the rest of the bike or the body of the bike and get it ready for paint. Got the uh, steering parts kind of mounted. It's just testing right now, but they are working great. It's gonna, it's gonna steer. <laughs> yeah. So I didn't record the painting process of this or, you know, painting the decals or putting the final assembly, putting it all together. Uh, I did make another video of this a little over a year ago, and I'll put a link in the description box or at the end of the video for that if you want to check it out. It does show a little bit of the steering mechanism, but it was more of a highlights reel. And I really wanted to kind of go over some of the build process of this and more... Than that, I wanted to talk about doing a fun project with a couple of great guys and just having an amazing time in the shop. And that's really what, in the end, it's all about. It's just building something fun and having a good time with your friends. And that was definitely this project. So let's end this project on a good note and uh, turn up the music and take this thing for a spin. If you made it through the whole video, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this type of build project or you have suggestions for future build projects, let me know down in the comments section below. I love these kind of projects. But getting a chance to work with great guys and having a wonderful time is absolutely phenomenal. It was fun building Wilson with Kyle and Jim and everybody else who pitched down on it. Thank you so much. While you're here, don't forget to subscribe and hit that little bell notification next to the subscribe button so you get notified when I post a new video up. I hope I earned your subscription. We'll see you soon.